All right, Blaze Smith, welcome to the Forge. Let's get into it. As I'm sure you've already guessed, you guys will be salvaging your medals from this here burned out SUV. You guys will only have three hours, and that time starts now. I'm Bo Geeson, 52. I love to forge. It's just molding metal to whatever you want it to be. The artistic side of it, you can just do anything when you can move metal. I crawl down there, and there's some big round bar stock. Well, I'm going to heat this up, and I'm going to try out that press. Let me do it. My plan for the round is to get this thing drawn out. I can finally start my heat treat. Bo's getting ready to quench. Leave it down in there. I grabbed a file. I ran it across the blade. Not hardened. This time, I'm going to bring it out a little hotter. There yeah, we go. Perfect. Nice color. That's nice the color, color you want to see. I pull it out of the quench. I hit it with the file. Okay. It's good to go. Thank God I'm finally done with that, and I can get on the grinder and remove some of this material. Let's go back to grinding, I guess. So I'm at the grinder. I'm trying to clean this thing up. And then I realize this is just a rectangle of nothing. I'm going to put a bend in the entire blade to give it a little more character. And then I'm also going to grind the tip. I'm going to have to heat treat for a third time which is a big risk. I could have a catastrophic failure, and especially after my last quench. But, you know, this is a competition, and I've got to make some kind of details as it's just too boring. Let's do it. Bo's in for his third quench. I pull it out. I get the file. It skates right across it. We're good. I'm ready to move on back to the grinder. My name is Kevin Adams. I am a technical instructor for the United States Army, and I'm a part-time bladesmith. My grandfather and my father worked in the same steel mill together, so their influence enabled me to be able to pick up the trade fairly quickly. My son used to race motocross, and I was his mechanic that entire time. So I know where there's good steel. I got my steel in the forge. Everything's looking good. I have to grind in good profile and get my handle ground in and get the bolster set for the blade. I'm looking at my piece inside the forge. I'm getting ready to quench it. That looks like a melted stick of butter. Look at that thing. Put her in the quench. I pull my blade out. I see good color. The blade, it does have a little bit of twist to it, but I know I can get that out by hand. My name is Eric Fontaine, and I have been bladesmithing now for almost 10 years. I stay with it because it's a comfort place for me. And just being able to create something, it's a really cool experience. So I'm immediately looking for springs because I know those are going to be 5160. So now I need to get the coil spring straight. You got it nice and hot before you went to straighten yeah. it out. That was smart. My next order of business is to go over to the Big Blue to widen it and flatten it. And I put it in at a diagonal. So not only does it flatten it, but it also widens it at the same time. I'm finishing up at the grinder, and I'm ready for quenching. That blade is screaming hot at the tip. That's way too hot. I think it came out quite well. I'm checking my blade, and I have a slight warp near the tang. I put my blade in the vise just to try to straighten it out just a little bit. It's working almost. If I go too much on the vise, the blade could snap. So I decide that I'm not going to press my luck any further, and I'm going to grind the rest of it out. Five, four, three, two, one. Turn off your machines, put down your tools. Round one is officially over. Gentlemen, congratulations. The three of you are moving forward into round two of our competition. If you guys look over to your right, you see we've got a pile of burnt out wood we found in the SUV. That is all you have for your handle material. Anybody used burnt wood before? No, not yet? Well, there's a first time for everything. All right, guys, as always, watch the clock. You will only have two hours in round two of the competition, and that time starts now. All right, what do we got here? So all this wood looks the same to me. That's the hard stuff. It sounds solid, so I'm just going to run with it. Seems good. The way this handle fits in the judge's hands is so important. They've got a lot of power coming down on these chops. So 
So what I'm doing now is putting these deep contours in the handle for the judge's hands. I think I put a nice handle on this piece. I hope I got it sharp enough for the test, but I feel good. I need my tank fixed before I can even put my handle on. I've got to keep the blade cool so it doesn't lose my heat treat. So I wrap it in some wet towels, heat up the tang from the bolster back, just so I can straighten it. There, Kevin's back there putting some serious torque on that tang, trying to straighten it out. I got my tang straight. There's a little bit of grinding I can do to get some of the little imperfections out. I'm happy with it. Great. I pride myself on putting a good handle on the piece that I make, because the handle on a blade is an interface uh, so it's like a keyboard on a computer. I'm going to flare out the ends so your hand stays in a good gripping position. I don't think there's anybody else that burns their wood before they put it on the handle. That's only something you'll find on Forged in Fire. I'm trying to get the pins to go through. I'm trying to get everything lined up. It's close, but it's just quite not there. Hmm. I don't want to force it. So I'm constantly going back to the drill press, check it again. That's better. I don't know what I did differently, but I get it to go together and we're in business. My next step is to go over to the grinder until I get a shape that feels comfortable. I'm gonna make this blade awesome. I find some clear nail polish. I paint on the blade forged in fire and I go into the acid for a few minutes. I'm borrowing your acid. Go ahead. It is one. Awesome looking knife. Five, four, three, two, one. Put down your tools, turn off your machines. Round two is over. Welcome to the strength test, our tailgate chop. Now I'm going to take each of your knives and repeatedly and mercilessly beat them into this SUV lift gate. What your blades do to this lift gate, I'm not too concerned about. I want to see what the gate does to your blades. Bo, you're up first. How are you feeling? Get some, Jay. I'm not done. <laughs> hey, you survived, Bo. Did. Good job. You do have some spots, a little bit of rolling. There's a couple spots, like right down here, where there's really not an edge. Mm. The handle's still secure. It's just right in here, this spot. Even though you've got it contoured, this kind of digs in, but didn't fly apart. I'll Good job. It. Thank you, Jay. Kevin, how you feeling? Nervous. Good job. Good job, Kevin. Thank you. You got, I mean, the slightest, I mean, you know, it's barely catch a nail little bit of rolling. It's still straight as it was. The only problem I have is when you're doing an integral, this tends to become part of your handle as opposed to a guard. So there's a lot of handle left over, but nothing moved. You survived the tailgate chop. Good job, man. Thank you. And then there was Eric. And there was Eric. Ready to go? Give it hell. You survived. Good job. We do have a few issues, though. And you can see you got chipping and rolling from there to there. That being said, it held up extremely well. The handle, I like the contouring you did, but the problem is it's still pretty round. You know, I could pretty easily spin this in my hand. But that being said, still in one piece. Good job. Thank you. This is the sharpness test, the fuel hose slice. Now, to find out how sharp your weapons are, I will take your weapons and try to cut through these fuel hose. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what your edge will do to these hoses. Bo, you're up first. You ready for this? I'm ready. All right, Bo, first stop, your handle construction. It fits my hand nicely. Now your edge, it's not very sharp all the way through. The fuel hose, it cut it, but it didn't cut all the way through. But overall, we know it'll cut. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Kevin, your turn, sir. You ready? Oh, yes. Let's do this. Mm. 
Mm. All right, Kevin, let's talk about your weapon here. First up, I like the handle construction. I really appreciate the integral part that you put into your handle here. It's got a nice feel to it. I love that you curved it because the heavier your front blade is, it's nice to be able to have that control. Now your edge here. It looks like the strength test really dulled your blade also. It cut the first hose, but not all the way through. But overall, sir, we know it cuts. All right, thank you. All right, Eric, your turn. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right, Eric, now your handle construction is very smooth. I like the flare that you have. I can see where it can rotate a little bit. Now your edge. During the strength test, it took some dulling. But because it is so thin, it actually works for this particular test. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. Thank you. We gave you guys a hard challenge, and you all performed really well in our test. The judges have deliberated, and only two of you can go forward into round three of the competition. And the bladesmith leaving the forge is... Bo. Unfortunately, not going forward in the next round of the competition, and Jay's going to tell you why. Bo, you guys performed pretty equally in the strength test, and then the front end of that handle being uncomfortable to hold on to for very long, the reasons we're letting you go. Okay. Bo, we want to thank you for all your hard work and especially your great sportsmanship in round one, but unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you to please step off the forge floor. Okay. Oh, I'm disappointed. Even though it didn't go my way, I'm really proud of the work that I did here, and I'm going to keep on making knives.